Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Phoenix Trading Strategies. We're teaching Jonathan information allows you to trade successfully. Today is April 22nd, 2016. It is 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Before we continue, let's go to the disclaimer. Disclaimer, future stocks and spot currency trading are large potential rewards, but also large potential risk. You must be aware of the risk and be willing to accept them in order to invest in future stocks and forex markets. Don't trade with money you can't afford to lose. This presentation website is neither a solicitation nor an offer to buy sell future stocks or forex. The representation is being made that any account will or is likely to achieve profits or losses similar to those discussed on this presentation or website. Past performance of indicators or methodology are not necessarily indicative of future results. Okay. Let's go to the calendar real quickly. It is Friday. So right now, numbers came out uh, for the U.S. Uh, and for Canada, practically, the U.S., we still have a few minutes. So core CPA came out better than expected for them. Uh, core retail sales came out better than expected. CPI month on month came out better than expected. Retail sales month on month came out better than expected. Really good numbers, surprisingly to everyone else. Um, day before Earth Day. <laughs> Uh, right now, we should be having flash manufacturing PMI come out within the next 15 minutes, and that'll be it for news. So let's see if we can find anything in the charts that reflects any of these trades right now. Let's go to... Okay, so... Right now, what we have is we actually have a trade opportunity in the Dow futures to go long. Regardless of the fact that it came down, this thing is going to go up. Now, the reason why I say, and see, it's already starting to, to, to pop, and it's just going to go. This one's not going to stop. Um... Let's see if we can get a better entry in it right now. Give it a second. I'd say here. So here's the reason why this thing is looking to go long. And I think we kind of had a good moment. So what we have here on the 15 minute, you have power. You have a power dot formation. So they came down, but you see how they used how the trend stopped basically started to form to the upside and then flatlined. Whenever you see that they come down and they basically use it as a as a uh, support level, the first time, if they repeat the process over again, and in this case they have, then what we're looking for is we're looking for these candles to actually, the, candle, the body of the candle to actually close above the price identifier. If we see that happen twice the way it happened here, then we should see another candle basically spike to the upside and then continue. That's what we're seeing right now. Now, here they're facing a little bit of resistance because of this pivot, but the minute it breaks this pivot, you know, and this level here, 17,929, we should see it come up again. So, you know, they played this up and down game all night long. Uh, I think that they're going to rally this thing. I think they're just setting up for them. You know, the cash market just opened right now. So I think their intent is to drive the market up, uh, which should be interesting to see in that regard because it would only prove that... They were using this as a support level. If we go down to a 10-minute or a 5-minute, and let's take a look at the 5-minute. Okay. We have power dots here on the 5. And here, what they did is that, you see how they came down? They did it here, and they went up. They did it here again, and then they went up. Here, they did it again, and finally they made that move. 
here we're at basically they're just holding but they're gonna break to the upside the decisions already been made in the, on their part this pivot and the pivot here are the ones that have basically held held this from going any further to the upside but it's not going to I don't think it's going to hold it and I think they're going to break once they break it will be pretty aggressive I think what they're doing is that they're setting up for the news so it's just a matter of being a little bit patient um, surprised why the stock market didn't open up a little bit more aggressively to drive to drive this up because they've been trading around 17.9 for quite some time and they came down to 17 18 870 and they could not they could not drive price action down any further so this is a very crucial point right here for this for this trade to move up and the way I see it it's got to move up there's no uh, there's no way that they can hold it and if they drive it up then at that point expectations I would say that they're gonna try and go to 1800 again but I think that once they reach maybe 17,950, if they don't break above it, then they could come down from there. But right now the trade is up. So we're going to see basically how they drive this. Now this is something, oh yeah, right now they're, they're far from the power dots. I mean, they made a move pretty aggressively. We sh actually should have gotten in here at 17,901. You know, we missed the first 20, 20 points on this trade. So right here it's very crucial because there's a pivot here and if it breaks and it just broke we should see this trade really just jump. But again, this is where I think that we're going to have trouble at 17.943. That's probably where we're going to have a little bit of an issue. But it's going. So we caught it at a good, at a good moment. Now, let's talk about this, the dynamic about this trade. Even though in the higher time frame they did have power dot formation here uh, on the 15 minute, they used the trend stop as a um, support level. And they did so three times. Whenever they do that, if they, you know, in this case, you can see how they used it three times. They came down. But more importantly is that this was actually this is an entry and this one here these were these were the ones that basically called it why good question as they came down and they tested um, the power dots here this candle never closed below the volume price identifier as you can see right here they did it here they did it here and they did it here and because of that this move took took effect now here for instance if we see this candle close below the volume price identifier then it's going to reverse so it has to has to continue and the only reason why is because there's a pivot right here that held it so it's doing it again but I think that we have at least another two or three candles up. So it's just a matter of being a little patient right now and waiting to see if it plays. Normally, once they initiate, we usually have at least six candles. One two three four five six and the seventh one so if it doesn't break above right now then we'll have to we'll have to exit and reassess direction
So this this is a crucial moment right now for this trade. Because usually they'll give you six candles, six to seven candles, and then reverse. So in this case, we're right there. see what they do okay this is not good we have one more minute in this candle and then it's crunch time okay that's good that's what I need to say I needed to I need to see it break and I need to see the the uh, dashes actually um, close right below where the price action is going. Okay, now the next candle's moving up, so we're good. So this thing should move up. Uh, we need it to break above 17.932. That's the only thing. By it not doing so, we're and again, they're just probably waiting for that news release which isn't really an important one, which is really getting under my skin. Because it's just flash market PMI. It's not supposed to be relevant. But it should make a move up from this point. I'll be right back. There we go, see? So now, ooh, that was that was pretty nasty wick with them that they formed. So now we're at a crossroads because it has to break above 17,935. It has to close above it. And if it doesn't, and if it does, then we're going to 17,945. Now, if we go to the higher time frames, then let's do that. Let's see where this thing is going to end. Good morning, good morning. 
yeah, right here. If it breaks above this, then this trade is on. And it's going to be a real runner because it should come up to 17,961 right after that. 17,977 after that. And we could see it come right back up to 1852, which would just be a phenomenal trade. Um, but most definitely 1823. See right here, this is where it's basically just holding. But normally, once once a trend begins in the higher time frames, then usually it'll give us at least six candles up. So that means we've got plenty of time on this. Let's go down to a, actually let's go to a 60 minute real quickly. Okay, so this is a good, on the 60 minute, this trade was set up to go long because they did it here. They did it here and they did it here. Um, they set this as their support level. We had power dot formations here. Uh, they ended up trading above. The pivots came down, retested them right where this formed and they moved and now this is where we're currently at right now let's go to a 10 minute <coughs> excuse me my only issue about this trade right now is that it's having an issue breaking above 17.945 there it goes see if there's any pivots here right here that one and then they just came up here 171950 this is why the pivots are very crucial because they pretty much map out how the trade is evolving and if it doesn't break above those levels then it may be time to exit now the numbers should have come up right now for this PMI uh, and they came out less, not really lower, as low as expected, but they came out slightly lower. Not a bad number per se, but enough to hold. So it doesn't look like it wants to give us more than that. Yeah, it's time to cut bait and basically exit the poles. It pulled back too aggressively. We can wait and see what happens right now in the next two minutes. And if it goes right back up to retest 17.945, then maybe because this is the pivot that it's having problem with right here. 17,943, 17,945. We're up 12 ticks. 10, 12. Momentum is to the upside on this thing. Let's see. There is a... I would not have taken the trade here as much as I would as I would prefer taking it here. 
the signal is better here, and they did it right off the trend stop, which where they used it right off of power dots earlier. But we got in a little late. We actually would have been up right now, like 20 ticks. But we would have gotten in this one. Alright, second time. If it doesn't break above this second time, then it's time to basically exit the poles because that means that they're going to reverse and it looks like they're going to reverse it and bring it down. So let's give it one more chance. See, it's having a problem right there. And they just have a real issue about 17,943. Now, sometimes you just have to wait and let the trade evolve. But in this case, they've dropped their point of control to the middle, and that's concerning. So this candle has to make the move up. If it doesn't, then it's time to come down. And I think they're actually going to make one more last try, and then that may be it. But if it doesn't fulfill, then we basically just need to exit and take what we can get. So let's see. All right. This would be the second attempt and the final attempt that we're looking for. Now remember, we've had an issue here at 17,945. <clears throat> so if it breaks, it's going to go up another 10 pips, another 10 ticks <clears throat> to 17,955. If it goes up to 17,955, then it should go to 17,970, which is where I think it may end up stalling. Yeah, see, it's it's not uh, not fulfilling. Nope, it's time to exit. Order, order. They're going to reverse it. And the reason I say this is because if this candle closes at a very distant, and see, this candle just opened, so I have an issue with this candle. That's why I'm not jumping back into this market. If it was towards the end of the cycle of this candle, and this candle closed at a distance from the point of control, then I would say it's going to reverse because because of the wick and because the POC here ended up closing or forming right where the pivot is. So... I didn't like the way that it was trading. I mean, it may continue, but sometimes it's better to just to, to be a spectator and, and not be part of it and just take what's on the table because they could, they could reverse at any moment. <clears throat> Let's see if we find something else that would be a little better than this. Yeah, see, that's what I'm, we've reached a point here where where it's just facing too much resistance, but I'm not ready to go short because I want it to do so towards the end of the cycle of the candle. But in the meantime, let me pull up the volume. See? <laughs> that may be all she has all it has to give right there we might find a second trade for it OK. 
Okay. So here's the here's the good news. Let me give you the bad news. The bad news is that it doesn't look like it's going to go any higher. The good news is that we're catching it going short. <clears throat> and the reason why is because we have volume divergence right here. So remember, here's, here's how to identify when a trend is over or when they're going to reverse. Normally you'll have them spike and settle below a pivot and if it settles below a pivot then the next candle should spike up one more time to make an attempt to test that level and by not breaking it if the candle ends up there if the point of control ends up going down the way it just did right now uh, then that means that they're going to bring it down I mean it was nice to think that they were going to rally it because I've been looking for you know for a rally to the upside but they're not giving us a rally so here you had them basically throw in a tremendous amount of volume in the market and it failed to go any higher I mean it, it was a boost of one candle look at the volume here you had this is the open so whenever they have the open here it's pretty pretty aggressive and with that amount of volume they should have driven this higher this candle came in a tremendous amount of volume and they could not fulfill above 17945 and then they pulled right back down from the previous from from the daily high so now this candle has to go red if this candle continues to be bearish which seems to be the case then we should come right back down to 17 17 870 from here <clears throat> at least that is what they're leading us to believe just because they could not break above 17 945 so this candle is very crucial uh, so long as it maintains itself negative or closing below the body of this candle then we should be good but we have it's a brand new candle so we still have four minutes on it <clears throat> point of control are these lines in between the candles where and what the point of control is what that means is that that is the price level that the buyers prefer to buy at and the sellers prefer to sell at so in this case the point of control for the buyers is up here the point of control for the sellers is down here and this you know this indicator is actually very crucial to our volume indicator because whenever they line up the way they just did and you have volume divergence the way we have here you'll usually see it with a spike so this you will usually spike and then the next candle if it goes up but ends up closing below the previous candle and you can see the dash low closing lower than the previous one that means that it's settling at a lower price and if that's the case that means that they're pulling volume or liquidity away from the upside <coughs> and you'll have this volume bar the, the next one right after it is usually an inside bar and that means that it's a candle trading inside the previous one and if that happens then basically the reversal is usually is usually sustained at that point so so long as this candle closes in between the body of this candle we're good this should continue to go short and we've got two minutes left on this candle And it's the same principle in FX. This, in, you know, this is where it becomes really important sometimes to watch a trade 
instead of trading the trade because you get caught emotionally in the trade and you can't learn from it. So whenever this happens, you want to you want to see and identify that pattern because the more you identify that pattern, the better. Um, especially when they're you know testing it around a specific high and they're failing to to break that that pivot and sometimes you may have power dots there and sometimes you may not so it's you know if you have power dots even great even better but if you don't then that trade is pretty much and you'll usually see this pattern more effectively on the 10 and 15 minute uh, you will see it form in the five minute but if you see it form on the 10 or 15 minute it's usually more effective. Okay, you see why? See, because it didn't close below it, uh, and it came right back above. This happened here, but it's still. You still have volume to the downside, so this one may pull down, may come back down slightly to retest. But I'm not happy with the way that it played. Because it ended up closing above, uh, right above this, uh, the open of this candle, or the close of this candle. The reversal would have been more sustained if it would have closed below it, then we would have seen a much more aggressive move to the downside. So they're going to retest it right here, and if they fail here again, then it should come down, but at this point I don't think I want to be a part of the retest. We may need to reverse posi the position here because they're, they're, it looks like they, they're going to make an attempt to take it up. Yep, they're making that attempt right now. Great. We're going to have to reverse it. Now that was that was the problem that this one failed us here. If this candle would not have failed us here, then the reversal would have been intact. That's why you have to wait for it, because the close of this candle, this third candle, is crucial when they do this uh, when they do this trade. No, you did not. <coughs> Boy, that seventeen nine forty five is just one significant resistance level that they're just having a real hard time with. But this is a brand new candle right now, so I'm not going to be jumping in on it just because. because they're using the trend dots right now as support levels. Give it a minute. Pivot is right here, seventeen nine thirty five. positions.
Still has more bullish volume. I mean, they're really, really trying to negative volume but it hasn't broken below and the next trend dot would form right here <clears throat> that means that it's going to that it should continue to go along from this point this is a candle that we were looking for to go down and it failed so this is more of a more of a small retracement before it goes back up See, even with a slightly negative volume that they brought in, it wasn't enough. They needed to break below this pivot and this one, and they they failed miserably at it. And right now, we should see a new candle, and you should see a trend dot form right there. Well, this actually, this candle has another five minutes, but it's not. Uh, It's not gonna. It's not gonna stay bearish. It's. It's gonna go right back up. This is where looking at volume is very crucial because with the amount of volume that they brought into this candle to not really be able to take control uh, and bring it down further tells us yeah see they're facing we're not even at this pivot. This is the pivot that they needed. They would need to retest, and they haven't even come close to it. to the sellers so they are trying to make an attempt <clears throat> but in these next two minutes if they don't break below this pivot it's over for them it's got to go right back up so now they're testing it
this a little bit away out of one minute left on this thing. <clears throat> okay, no. This is time to... still in bullish mode. <clears throat> this isn't over. Now here, what are we looking for here? They broke above this, broke above this. They've got to come up here to 1935 one more time. here unless there's a pivot here that I'm missing and I don't think that I am oh there is right there at 19 at 17 929 <clears throat> but it looks like it's gonna break it and once it breaks above it comes to 1935 and then we're right back to 1945 Fridays they like to play this ping pong tango game but if this candle breaks above 1929 which it looks like it will it'll make another attempt to the upside right back to our entry but now liquidity is light we'll see how the volume is coming in a lot lower than before that's not a bad thing because if we, if we have more price action driven by lighter volume uh, that's actually a good thing and that would change the dynamic of this of this trade because this thing should have gone short and it failed 
see, we should have seen this thing really just come crashing down, and it didn't. So this candle is actually holding it from doing so. So if it continues its trajectory and it breaks above, we should be right back, right back on track. But it's having a real issue right here at 17.929. Boy, that pivot is really doing a number for us. So long as it closes, oops, it has to close above 19, 17, 922. And it still has time. <coughs> Excuse me. The only problem that I have with this trade is because they did play this, they didn't come down in the second, in the third, they came down in the fourth candle, but they should have fulfilled and continued the trend down, they didn't. That's the only reason why I'm still bullish and believe that this will make, this will come back. Because this candle should have gone bearish, and it didn't. And the buyers are slowly coming in and driving this. Bouncing right off of this level. This trade is done for. This got one more minute left, and the next one, 
going to do exactly what I said, which is reverse to the downside. <clears throat> I got tricked up here when they when they spiked up again. Yep. Nope. Time to exit. This thing will come down. I wasn't wrong about the second trade going down. They, I was caught. Normally, the third candle is the one where they reversed, and they didn't. They pulled it on the fourth one, and that's where it caught me off guard. But this thing, at this point, is is definitely bearish. It's not going to be bullish any further. It's just going to come down from this point. And projected it could come right back down to 17,890. And then from that point, the next low would be 17,874. Would have been a good trade on the reversal. But it didn't play. I could still pick up and recover part of what I lost here on this trade. But I don't like to get in on a second trade. Once the trade initiates, I usually tend to stay away from it because I know that it's I'm late and once I'm late I'm late I should have stayed in short on this trade <coughs> when I've been up 40 ticks by now so if you're if you were short and you stayed short on this trade you're looking at 17874 as your support level that's where it should uh, end up end up closing. You still have another three. There's still another two or three candles left in this move to the downside. I should have caught wind of that when they did that head fake. That's on me. Let's take a look and see if we find something else that will. Maybe the US yen hasn't moved yet. <clears throat> Give it a second. there. It's the volume indicator and the price identifier. They take up a tremendous amount of, of memory. <clears throat> come on, come on, come on. We're almost there. Give it a second, we're almost there. there. Okay, looks like it's going to come out now. 
Okay. Oh, now this one hasn't moved. Wow, we just may be in the right position to short this thing. This thing is late. And it's going and it's coming down. So the US yen is the one that <clears throat> will make up for the uh, the down not playing. Up outperforming fat, uh, first before this one. I would have expected this one to move uh, just as bad. Stop loss, we're looking here right above 10 pips, that's it. 10, 10 pips is your stop loss on this thing. And since it didn't go down along with the, uh, let me remove these indicators now so that we can move faster on this. Oh, this just might be the trade of the morning. I thought the Dow was the one that was going to put a smile on our face. But this one may be, may be next. Let's go to a five minute. Yeah, this candle closes below the trend dots, then we should be good. And this thing should, should come crashing down. because it's very subjective to how the Dow trades in the morning. And since it did not play out uh, originally, it uh, looks like we're, we can't, we're catching it right on time. I'm not expecting a big move here, you know, but most definitely 12 pips would be very easy to catch. And if it goes below that, then at that point I'm looking for the next level, I think we're going to have to go to a higher time frame. Let's go to a 30 minute. Oh, that's why they're trading right off a 240 minute level, but they've, that they have uh, failed to, to break to. See right here, this level is very crucial. And they, they usually will not hit it. They'll usually miss it by 10 pips, and they'll do that intentionally. So that could be, let's go to a 60-minute, yeah. Let me go higher. I want to see something. Yes, I need more data. Uh, but let's go to 600. Okay, the 600 right there. So they finished their cycle to this price level, and from here it looks down for 80. I'm looking to see if there's a power dot formation on the higher time frames that would really make this trade credible for us. We only have that 240 minute level that they didn't reach. Uh, 120, no, 90 minute, nope, the 60, no, 45, nothing, 30, nothing, 20, it's just trading right off that level, 14 minute, Okay, good. It's it's trading right below. It's closing right below the trend dot, so we're good. The ten minute. Okay. The seven minute. Sometimes the seven minute will give us an idea, but not this time. Let's go to a three minute real quickly. I don't like to trade off the three minute. Okay, so this is where they finished. They f they failed. This is very crucial. We have to break below 1124. Uh, Looks like it's going to break below it, but that's where this is at. <coughs> and now let me add the volume and the price identifier. This might be the trade of the morning for us right now, where we actually Let's see. Here's where we see the rest of the uh, 
uh, the US yen. The US yen is what we're looking at. <clears throat> See those two indicators take up a tremendous amount of memory, but they're very crucial because of the information they provide. But normally we map out the levels on higher time frames, and then they usually trade off those levels very specifically. <clears throat> come on, come on, come on. <clears throat> Almost there, guys. This is the thing about NinjaTrader right now. I mean, it's a great platform because you can use different time frames than your five, your 10, your 15, your 30, your one hour, your four hour, your daily, your weekly and monthly. So it allows you to really look at different time frames and pinpoint, in our case, the price levels that they're using uh, to define their trade. And this is something that MetaTrader 4 doesn't do because it's very limited uh, in that regard. Also, another limitation that I don't like about MT4 is the fact that uh, it uses minute data. It doesn't use tick data. So most indicators really are very lagging in that regard. All right, let's see this. Let's expand it out. Mm, didn't like the way that played, but it still looks still looks good to the downside based on how they've traded it, how they traded it here. So I'm going to be a little patient with this. Again, by now, I would, have, I would have expected this trade to actually follow in the same direction of the Dow earlier when it, uh, when it reversed, and it didn't really do much. So sometimes it, it reacts right away, and sometimes it just reacts late. I think we may have caught it reacting late. See, we're right back to break even. The Dow's trading at 17,970 on the cash market, so it's down. <clears throat> And coming down, yeah, I don't think they're going to hold it. You know, 18,000 on the cash market on the spot market for the Dow is a little tough for them to hold. So this trade should come, should come down. It may be a day where they're taking profit, which is good for us on the yen trade, 
because it'll bring this trade right down in our favor. Now, if it does break below 11, 111 20, then we're looking at a good run because I don't see any other pivots. I mean, I they would have to come literally all the way down here to 110.77. And that would be just a phenomenal trade for us. We're talking a good 50 pips. But we have to wait and see. Because it is Friday. And Fridays are strange. <coughs> Excuse me. Here they, this one they pulled up, they pulled right back down. They did come down, but it hasn't fulfilled. And I would have expected more out of this trade right now. <clears throat> Here's where sometimes when, you, when you're in the trade, you have to look at how the volume, how price action in the candle reacts to the volume. Now, this thing has slightly bullish volume. It has a net of 8.8, .8, million now, 10 million. It's got 31 million on the buy, 21 on the sell, 32 on the buy, 33. But it hasn't reacted to the upside. 34, 23 million, all it took, all it did was just move slightly with bearish volume coming in, see we're at 26 on the, on, on the negative, 35 on the buy, 27 on the sell, and it's still staying below that level, 35 on the buy, 31 on the sell, so the sellers are starting to come in again, so we'll see. And this is usually the time when you when you when you when you're in a trade, and you know that they've hit a resistance level. Uh, if the bullish volume doesn't drive it, then you'll see as the bearish volume slightly comes in, you'll see a reaction. And when you see that reaction, it means down. See, it's practically balanced. 44 on the buy, 43 on the sell, 46 on the buy, 44 on the sell, but it's still, <coughs> now they're evenly balanced, now it's negative again, so I really would have expected this to really come down by now. especially after this move, because once this candle closed below the point of control here and it pulled down, it did come down, but it hasn't uh, played out any further. That's my only concern right now on this trade. And I would have expected a much bigger reaction based on how the Dow has come down for this thing to do the same, and it hasn't. I did do one great bullish run overnight, though, I have to admit. But we should see some retracement here. And it may 
may not be yeah see I would have expected more on this trade right now and by not getting more I'm not that happy with it so at this point I think it's time for us to exit the stage it's not going to uh, it's not going to play to the downside I would have expected it to do so by now it's just it's just sustaining itself which is not uh, not what I was looking for I would I was expecting a much more aggressive move by now on this trade and we just haven't had it and sometimes if you if you don't see a trade play out right away uh, you know you have to give it a, I like to give a trade at least a half hour if within a half hour I don't see the reaction that I'm looking for then at that point it's time to exit and in this case I'm not seeing it so I'd rather just exit I'm not gonna wait for it to, to go up one more time let's take a look let me remove these indicators real quickly and we'll move slightly over all right so let's let me change the data series I think I have too many days on it as well yep that'll do it let's go to 40 and let's scan this now all right let's take a look at the CAD oh, the US CAD See, this already came down because oil went up. Maybe oil's making a retracement. Let's take a look. Yeah, it's a slight retracement. I wouldn't, I wouldn't bet on that trade right now. Let's take a look at the Dow. Yeah, see, look, it came all the way down. God, that really just gets under my skin. They tricked me on this trade. This thing would have been a beautiful trade. It would have been a 100-point run. Well, it is what it is. Can't cry about it. All right, let's take a look at the euro, see if we have anything. Okay, the euro already reacted, so we were late on this uh, on this trade. Power dot formations here. And it came down. Not a lot, you know. 15 pips is what it's down, so it hasn't done a whole lot. Ah, the pound dollar. This one's interesting. This was a nice trade to play when they came up and pulled down. Uh, they came down pretty nicely. A good 30 pip trade there. Let's see the pound Aussie. Pound Aussie. Hmm. Pound yen. Nothing. New Zealand CAD. Oh, this one's this one's interesting actually <clears throat> but it's more to the downside right now problem is that it doesn't move that much when it moves it's you're either there at the right time or you're not okay you know again uh, you know this one just might be this is no no we're late on this one as well it it should have reacted already a lot faster and it didn't the pound New Zealand now this one and the pound Aussie are very unique because usually once they once they go directional they move pretty aggressively the only thing is that the stop loss on this thing is pretty aggressive you're talking 20 pips and that's what I don't like if I can identify the support level early on, I sort of tend to stay away from it because it could move very aggressively against you. That's the only reason why I'm not saying jump on this trade. Euro New Zealand, we have power dots here. Now they already came up and they failed to break above this pivot. So let's take a look at the Aussie dollar. 
Okay, so we have weakness right now in the Aussie. New Zealand Yen, Pound Swiss. Yeah, we're late on this one. We'd have to put a stop loss of 14, no, 10 pips actually. But I don't like the way this thing played here and the way that it came down. Granted, they did stall right here at these at these two pivots, and that's where the pivots come in. But, oh, power dot. Nice. Okay. So this may be one to look at. Let's take a look at the higher time frames real quickly. Oh, yes. This might, this just might be the the one to get involved in. But I wouldn't say to the upside quite yet. Let's take a look at this uh, 45 minute. All right, let's go down to the seven minute. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say short on this one. See how they're using the uh, trend dots as uh, resistance levels. All right, let me bring in the other indicators in, and I'll explain why. This one seems... Yeah, see, it's already playing. Let's go. <clears throat> I'll explain the reasoning behind that trade. As soon as it, as soon as the indicators come up. One minute. We're almost there, guys. Okay. So let's take a look at this. <clears throat> let's bring this down. So what we're looking for here is we're looking for basically confirmation of direction. So in this case, when they came up, two things happened. You see how they spiked up here and then they pulled right back down? The fact that this candle closed below the point of control here and that there's a pivot is significant. But the only reason why I stated short is because the distance between this candle and this candle basically pushed it down even further. Now, we have no pivot here in sight. At least I can't find one because we're at all-time highs on this thing. So we should have some sort of correction in this, which is what I was looking for in the US yen, but didn't find it. Now, as they pulled down, when this thing did, it, did that, it pulled and it broke right below the trend dots. And then this candle, of course, traded right below the trend, and this one just came down even further. So it went from... 140.91 down to 140.63 with almost a 30 pip trade to the downside. And they've been using the trend dots as resistance levels. Now here it's slightly breaking, you know, trading above it, but I don't think that it will do go 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 much far from it. I think it'll come right back down because they've already this in this case has become the next level. Of resistance right here this was the first one and they broke below it so when you're looking at a trade in this case if you're using this indicator you want to see how this trade plays now initially when this happens usually the second candle or in this case the fourth candle is the one that came down 
which is what happened to us in the previous trade, if you recall. It wasn't the third, it was the fourth candle that came down and they played this trade as if they were going to go long and they didn't. And they held on to it and so we're right back to square one. You saw how this one came up again but failed. If it closes below the trend up, which should be here, then this trade will come right back down. So what we're down is really nothing. It's, you know, four pips, which is very minimal. And if it comes down the way I think it will, then we should see this come down at least here to 140.59, which would be a 10 pip, you know, easy 10 pips to pick up, and then come down to 140.45. Usually, once they initiate a move, they will play the trade as if they're attempting to go back up, but they don't. And this is where you just have to let the trade evolve. you got to let it play. Because if you don't, and that's what happened to me on the Dow. On the Dow, I didn't let it play. I was in the right direction, down. And it came down practically 100 points. You know, we would have picked up 100 ticks on that thing. So... On the cash market, the Dow right now is down 71. So that thing came down even further. More reason for me to be upset. Because it wasn't on the third candle, it was on the fourth candle that they played the trade to the downside. So here, the way that they're, that they're trading this is that the sellers are still announcing with a point of control that they're still, see how it closed right below, right at the uh, the trend dot right there. This next candle should come right back down because it didn't really trade above it. So I'm not too concerned about the way that it opened because I think it's just going to come right back down. Again, sometimes we just have to let the trade just evolve and, and play out. And it takes time. Um, it's one of those things where if you don't, you may, you're going to get scared out of a trade. And see, right now you still have volume divergence to the downside. This is this has negative volume. Okay, this candle has negative volume, and more negative volume is coming into it. Now, I would have expected this a, a bigger reaction from it, um, but I haven't. So, but I'm still bearish on this trade. Look at the volume. You got 12 million on the buy, 27 on the sell. A difference of negative 15 million. Granted, you know, with that, 17 million now. I would have expected a much stronger reaction from this, but it's okay. Because remember, this pivot became the next resistance level once it broke below. So now we're trading off of this level. And usually in FX, they're very drastic of the move. You know, they don't, unlike futures where you know, there's a lot more volume in in the futures market in the market in in the morning. They're more directional. In FX, they like to play around and hold price. Um, don't ask me why. It's just the way that they that that the algorithms, I guess, are programmed right now. But see, this thing still has negative volume. I mean, you got 37 on the buy, 38 on the buy, 50 on the sell, 39, 40 on the buy, 50 on the sell. 47. Now they're trading at that pivot. But I'm still more inclined on the bearish side of this trade. And the only reason why is because the way this trade played out, this reversal here was very significant because the separation between the point of control here and here is one, but the fact that it pulled down aggressively and then this candle maintained and then this one pulled back pretty much calls the trade uh, to be more to the downside than anything. The fact that it reversed is, you know, like I said, it's something minimal. I'm not too, uh, I'm not too concerned about it because at the end of the day, uh, this thing should come right back down. But, 
we have to let the trade evolve. That you know, sometimes they come back and retest, and on the retest, you can sometimes get a better entry. So not a bad thing either. So in this case, if it doesn't break any higher, we can actually get another position to go short. But the volume is very light in this, and we're not seeing a tremendous amount of reaction. I would have expected a much bigger reaction by now, uh, based on the bullish volume that came in, and I didn't. So it's just a matter of just waiting for it, being a little patient, and, and letting it play. And and you got to have a little bit of thick skin because a trade can go against you, you know, 15, 20 pips sometimes. That's just the nature of the game. Uh, we like to try and find, you know, tight entries from the top, but in this case we had missed it and it had already reacted. But I think that we're still going to see the reaction that we're looking for uh, in this regard. Now it is Friday and volume does become, liquidity gets light uh, once, they've, once they've already established a move. And in this case, this thing moved pretty aggressively from the open. I mean, it went from 13,955, well, 139.55, all the way up to 140.98. That's a big move to the upside. Uh, too big, if you ask me. So there has to be some correction in it. You know, it's it's a move like this is will usually they'll usually have at least a 25% retracement, and this. This is not 25%. 25% is more around here, around 140.44, uh, and possibly 140.36. This, to me, would be a reasonable retracement to the downside. So this thing hasn't finished playing. And volume, if you're looking at volume uh, divergence, it began here. You always have to look to the highest point and see that the dash, in this case where it's settled, is higher than than most in this case when you go back. And if that is the case, then you should see this reaction. Now they did it here, and then here, then they did it here again. On these two and now they're currently doing it again so if it plays if it holds I would I would erase that one actually then we should see this trade come right back down because there at this point I don't see the reasoning behind this trade going long I, I mean it's just not there not after this move this move is very significant when I see it uh, when I see it play it's usually, you know, a very strong reversal, and that means that it's just a matter of time before the trade actually plays out, but you just have to let it evolve in play. So, as you can see, the, the volume is still negative on this candle. It's a bullish candle with negative volume, and we've, all, we've always talked about that, that you could never tell beforehand whether a candle was truly bullish or bearish. Even though it looks bullish, the volume inside it is bearish. That's a no-no. That concept cannot exist. So now we have a new, a new candle, and since this was negative, then this next candle should be negative. That's usually the case. Um, but you can see how they're bringing in bullish volume. So let's see what happens here.
excuse me. Remember, I told you it could come up and retest, which it did. Now, based on this, if it comes slightly down again, we have an, we have basically a re-entry with a better fill. So now, now I'm expecting this to come down from this point. Got to be patient with it. patience. testing.
you can see the volume here on the right side. See how it went negative after being up like 19 million on the buy. That's why I said they could come up and retest, which they've done it. So. I love to see them retest because when they do that, they usually fail. And upon seeing that, then we usually see the reversal. <clears throat> but they're fighting for it. I have to admit. They ended up closing slightly with bullish volume. But they came in with way too much volume. Look at that, 251 on the buy, 247 on the sell. Not for that type of move. It would have, The reaction should have been much stronger to the upside. And now here we have slightly bullish volume coming in. But I think it's overplayed again. Sometimes you just have to let the trade just evolve. Just wait for it. They're attempting to break that pivot again to the downside, which is right. They just broke it. And now here it comes. Some people call it luck. This isn't luck. Here's what happened. When this candle broke above and then closed right below, you see how it closed right below these two wicks right here? This became the next resistance level or the resistance level. When this candle closed aggressively below the point of control here and then this opened to the downside, this is usually the initiation of a bearish move. So what happens is that they will come up and retest. So long as they don't break above this price level, which is the one that I mentioned, they would not break, then at that point, they would come down. The reaction in FX is slower than it is in the futures. They do this on purpose. The algorithms right now are programmed to try, and that's why they tricked me in the Dow, you know, in the Dow market, uh, Dow futures, we would have picked up 100 points to the downside if I would have stayed short when I said it was going short. But they didn't pull the 
trade on the third candle, they pulled the short on the fourth candle. And from there, it was just, you know, a giveaway. So now we've pretty much, we've more than recovered from the minor loss that we had in the Dow. We're actually in the green for the day. Um, and I expect this to come down here to 140.44. So we're talking about a good 30 pip trade from where we're currently from our entry. That's not a bad trade to pick up on a Friday morning. So sometimes when you're when you see them spike like this, this is a pattern that you have to get into your head. If you you the only reason why you normally don't see this is because you don't have this indicator. Once you once you have our software and you see the, and you see this pattern, you'll see this pattern over and over and over. They do it even when they're trading to the upside. Let me show you where they did it here. See right here this candle? See how it spiked down and then they closed right above it. See how the point of control is right here at the bottom? This basically told you that they were initiating a bullish run right on top of power dots. And that's why they ran this thing all the way to the moon. I mean, what a trade that they pulled off. Well, this is more explicit because this one is a much bigger move that they did. Now, from this point, again, I'm expecting it now to come down to 140.44, you know which is another 15 pips uh, from where we're at. We're up 13 pips right now. We've recovered on the, on the slight mistake that we did on the Dow, which was a very light mistake, um, and we're in the green. So this trade should play out well enough. That's why I said when they came up to retest, we could probably get a, a, a re-entry, and that's why I re-entered it with, another, with a second lot. Uh, only because I knew that this trade was going to play and plus you had volume divergence. That is usually what will give it, give it away. If we didn't understand volume divergence the way we do now, we wouldn't be able to catch these trades. Oh, I like the way that one opened. That is a nice candle. We should see that thing come down hard. And again, this this is now the level that it's holding off on. But if it breaks below it, what a run. Because then it should come down here. So let's give it a moment. Come on, break below. Break below, because as soon as you break below, it's going to be really, really nasty. So now, when we're looking at this, if you see a trade set up like this, the way this one pulled off, not like this one. See how they did this here, but then it didn't come down, then they continued. Even though you had volume divergence here, this just announced that they were getting ready to go short, but they hadn't fulfilled. This is the one that did it, and it's be, it's based on the pattern. It's a very extreme pattern right now that is taking form. You had it here, and then you have it all the way down here. This extreme pattern is the one that I look for to find some of these trades. And I know that they're going to come back and retest. It's their nature, you know. Uh, sometimes, you know, we get we get in too early, but uh, you should draw these lines just to identify, you know, the resistance levels because this the resistance level is not the point of control here. It's right here where these candles actually closed, open and closed. This becomes your resistance level, your main one. And if they don't break above it, which in this case they have failed miserably to do so, then they got to come back down. But they're going to take their time, and when they do it, then the algorithms act aggressively because they're trying to induce you to go long.
And this is a trade that I was looking for in the yen, but I couldn't, you know, it just didn't play out. So I, that's why I told you, we don't have a trade. It's time to exit. <clears throat> so when I saw this one, I said, now this one looks like the one that might be the one that plays out for us. And this ain't over. It still has room to go. But from top to bottom, it would be from 140.92 to 140.44, a 45 pip move. And right now, you know, in the mornings, that's what we're finding. We're not, you know, it's rare that we find an 80, 70 pip move. We are finding 50 pip moves, so it's not, it is not impossible to get 20 to 30 pips out of a trade. Why are you stalling? You already broke below this level, broke the trend stop, so. <coughs> you have to finish the cycle from this pivot to this pivot. It's the bulls trying to come in and stall it and take control. See the volume, 93 on the buy, 91 on the sell. Not enough. This one was really drastic. Well, actually, it wasn't. 173 on the buy, 230 on the sell. Uh, this one had more volume than this one. Usually, the third or the third candle, which in this case was was this one, which I would have expected it here. See, look at this candle. Had 228 on the buy, 183 on the sell. This one, 199 to 11. All of these candles, they did a tremendous amount of high frequency trading around this around this level. Normally, you'll see that when they play this trade. Right now, this is their pattern that they've been trading, and it's in the futures. It's more explicit than it is in forex. Um, yesterday, I was. I was uh, going over this with a friend of mine on crude, and he hadn't seen that pattern ad as explicitly as I showed it to him. So this is one of the things that I'm going to be reviewing with some of you guys that have the software uh, this next week. I'm going to schedule you guys. I'm going to send you guys an email so that we can get you scheduled uh, to finish your training. And once you identify this pattern over and over again, you'll look for it. And these are the trades that you're going to pick up. So now this one should hit right here. Yeah, it should come down. Another, another six pips. I think it'll come down to 140.30 myself. So, but as you can see now, we're we're really deep in the green. Uh, and we would have we would have made the same amount on the Dow trade if we would have stayed in it. Uh, you know that hundred point move would have been on one contract uh, five hundred dollars. But they they sort of tricked me on that third candle. It was the fourth one that they played. So you got to watch that. I I usually like the third candle when they trade when they play the third candle. It's usually the best trade because I know that it's going to be an aggressive move to the downside. In this case, it was the fourth one, but it was so far, the dis it was so distant that they just really just pressed it. Okay, see, they broke below this pivot, 140.45, 140.44. So now we should see it come down uh, 140.35, 140, I think 140.30, because the trend stop is right here. So I think that's where they'll end the, end the trade. Any questions? This would be a good moment, guys. No questions? I imagine some of you are in the trade. Yes, no, maybe so.
missed it. Oh, how could you, man? I did this one just for you. I'm sorry, what was your question? Let's see. Taking, you know, taking a profit and then reopening isn't really... Normally, when when they play this type of trade, it's usually very uh, very aggressive. So it's hard to take a profit and then reopen. Remember, we got in it here when it was down here, and then we took a second. We entered. We we re-entered here when it was trading about right here. So when they came and retested, you know, it did go against us slightly. And then, of course, now it's now it's in favor. But now it seems like they're not going to play it any further to the downside. And um, I usually like to see three candles in a move like this. Uh, I'm not seeing it, and since I'm not seeing it, it's okay. I'll basically just take what's on the table. Let's see. Let's see the volume real quickly on this. I'm curious to see. We've got 40 on the buy, 27 on the sell, difference of 14 million positive. If it go, if it starts to come down, see how it's starting to come down? 12 positive, 11 positive, 10. So we're starting to see negative volume come in, 9, 9.4, 7 7.4, 6, 5.1, 5.4. Three point five. I'm not seeing any reaction in the candle. I should be seeing reaction in the candle, and that's bothering me. Now we have negative volume, and we have no reaction. That's a no-no. You know, I would have expected that thing to come down, and since it didn't, it tells me that they're pretty much done with this move. <coughs> so, based on that, it's time to exit. Not a bad trade. Um, you know, we got in here and came down. Yeah, we ended up picking picking up like 30 pips. Not a bad trade uh, for a Friday morning. And like I said, I would have wanted to see the same trade play out in the yen. We'll go take a look at the yen, and it didn't play. Uh, let me remove these indicators so that we can go back and take a look at that. Otherwise, we're going to get stuck, and I don't want to get stuck. All right, let's take a look at the yen real quickly. See, didn't do anything. We gave it a shot. You know, we got out at, at a break even, uh, but didn't play. And as for the Dow, that one played too well. I mean, I should have, we should have stayed in this trade when it came to retest. I mean, it came down all the way to 17,842. It actually came below. I was thinking it was going to come back down at 17,862. It actually came up, came down further, another 20 points. So, not a bad trade. Um, not a bad, not a bad Friday. Like I said, we're looking for that pattern, uh, and sometimes you can see it. On a 15-minute, it's very clear sometimes. On a, uh, That's why they played this trade out right here. Uh, on a 10-minute, it's very clear. And if you can see it on a 45-minute, and I don't like to really, you know, I don't really see it that often on a 45-minute, so I don't recommend looking for it. But when I do see it, it's usually a big run. Um, and it doesn't matter what pair you're looking at. You could be looking at gold. You could be looking at crude. Um, you could be looking at <coughs> at uh, you know the ES, uh, the e mini S and P. It doesn't matter. See, at least here we had power dots on the 45 minute. So the fact that they came up, we didn't see this on the Dow. Oh, actually, we did. Forgive me. So on the 40, the 45 minute, if you see power dots form on the 45 minute on the futures. Wait for them to come and retest, and they will play this trade. Even if it is in the smaller time frames, they'll play it. And then you've got your trade. So uh, let's take a look at the CAD. Uh, treacherous CAD. Pound dollar. See, they did play this trade here, but we took it on the pound Swissy. And we actually uh, made more pips on the pound Swissy than on this one. But this one, they played it right off of a resistance level. Now this is a midpoint, mid-range level. So if you've mapped out your levels uh, accordingly, 
the minute that you see this trade, the minute it broke, this thing should have gone up and it didn't. It actually held. Let me show you real quickly what the volume price identifier looked like here. And this is on a 45 minute. <coughs> so we're going to start looking at trades a little differently now. Uh, we're going to start looking at that pattern because that the algorithms have are actually using that pattern very aggressively right now. And so we'll be able to identify good trade opportunities. But sometimes we have to be on time. If you miss it, you miss it. You know, the problem is that we hate missing a trade. And it's very difficult to... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm reading something that's just killing me. Hackers stole 80 million from a central bank because it had $10 routers and no firewall. <laughs> oh, God, that is a joke for you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Let me draw a line on this, a, vert a vertical line right on this candle. And now let's go down to the, let's go down to a 10 minute. Give it a minute, we're almost there, guys. How can you have $10 routers for a central bank, really? Okay. So, not on the, doesn't look good on the 10 minute for the pound dollar. They did play it down, though. This was extreme. I think the point, if I would have seen the point of control up here, I would have been more happier with this trade than the way it played. Let's see, let's see, let's see if it's on the five. Almost there. Wait a minute, wait a minute. right here on the five. Here's where they played it. See, it's the same pattern they're playing. And they're doing it right off of specific power dot formations. Now this is on a higher time frame. So remember these levels are power dot formations in higher time frames. So whenever they do this, here they didn't retest as aggressively as they did on the pound Swissy. Uh, I think we probably would have gotten a better entry here, but as you can see, the trade still going. You know, probably will end right here. I don't think it'll go any further. Uh, and again, look right here. Uh, when you look, at, see how they when they came down and retested. See how they formed a power dot here, and then this trade ended up closing really high above the point of control. Then from that point, it never looked back. It went long from 143.33 all the way up to 144. That's a 70 pip trade. Here they did it. Here they did it, and this trade became a one from 144.33 all the way to 143.76. So I liked our trade more. I thought uh, for me the 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 pound Swissy was a much cleaner trade than than this one. This one is moving a little bit more aggressive. Um, the result is the same. I think it's just a matter of of going over um, the pattern recognition that's taking place right now. And right now. I'm, you know, I'm going to make a bold statement, but it's a true and see that came right back down. I hate these guys when they do that. There's going to be a tremendous amount of trade opportunities because they're going to be playing this trade left and right. You just have to wait for it, but there's going to be a lot of chop in the middle. So don't get discouraged with a lot of 
you know, the algorithms are, are trying to discourage people from staying in trades. Once this, once this pattern goes into effect, you're looking at a 40, 50 pip run or 50 or a 50 to 100 tick move. That's usually what you're looking for. Yes, you got to look at the smaller time frames uh, in order to find it. Because, and once it happens, usually it'll happen around, see, I haven't mapped this one out. You know, this one, if I mapped it out, I'm sure I would find uh, power dot levels around around this level. Let me let me draw an extended line real quickly, and we will, you know, we'll do it here, for instance, right off of this pivot. And then I'll go into the higher time frames. <coughs> so let me go to the higher, oh, no. God, I need to remove that indicator. Kick me. Why don't you? Ah! It takes up such an amount, such amount of memory. Yeah, you you normally map out your your levels. Okay, let's remove that indicator so that it doesn't interfere anymore with us while we look at this. Okay, so let's see if we can find some power dot levels that we hadn't found. Six hundred, nothing. Four eighty. 300 now let me tell you something this on the 480 you see how this trade is playing out if if you put the price identifier and you see that up here wait for the third candle if a third candle comes down this is going to come all the way back down and this is going to be a long-term position trade but it's not set up it's not set up yet you have to wait for that third candle Okay, nothing on the 240, or maybe, let's see. Yes, right here. See, here was the level. So let's go 240, let's, let's do it from here. It was in the 240. And right there. That's where they played it from. Let's continue. Let's go to the 180. That's why I said, you know, there has to be a level there. It's impossible for there not to be. Here's another one. And that's where they're holding it right there. But I wanted to show you that main one. The 120. Let's go to the 90. See if there's anything. The higher time frame always wins. That usually becomes the resistance level of choice for them. They will go straight to it. And when they do, then it's pretty much for the taking. Uh, so if you find it, see how they pulled away very aggressively to the downside from it? They went up and then boom, came right back down. <clears throat> but we would have looked for this trade in the smaller time frames. That pattern that I'm telling you about is in the smaller time frames. It is not in the higher time frames. It's more explicit in the smaller time frames. I like it on the five, on the 10 minute, on the 15 and the seven minute. If I see it there, then I know that the trade will play. And they'll usually come back up and retest before they pull right back down. See, this was deceiving because the minute they broke above this level, anyone would have said this is going long. But when they pulled this trade, they just came up, retested, and then smack. And see how aggressive the move is once they decide to move? This is the same pattern that we saw in the Pound Swissy. So this is the trade that you're looking for. Um, it's usually They'll usually come up and retest one more time. Uh, they'll never go above you know, the previous wicks. And that will usually be where you will find your entry and you will find uh, the trend stop actually formulating, which will serve as a resistance level, and then pop, they'll just, you know, bring that thing down. You should pick up 15, 20 pips immediately, um, but it's usually a 40, 50 pip trade at that point. So that's pretty much all I have for today, guys. I will see you Monday morning. Thank you for being patient with me uh, today. I was having technical issues, but I think that for the two hours it was worthwhile uh, to have traded today. I will see you Monday morning, same time, same place. I will uh, put up the recording of this uh, this one on YouTube and we'll, we will email it out to you guys.
Okay. Thanks, guys. Have a great one. Bye-bye now.